Oh, Tony. What a day to Same go as... for a boat ride. <laughs> With what a day to... Yeah, I've had enough of this guy. <laughs> I believe I was, telling, I was telling him to put Sea Shanty 2 on as, as we were sailing uh, across the ocean. Are you doing stuff here? Um, is someone steering? Or is like... I don't know who's okay, so Michael is steering the boat and I am holding on so I don't fall off. But I think at one point okay. I just start dancing. This is Valheim, Tangerine. Uh, survival games, yeah. I guess. We're going to talk about Valheim and the brand new Sons of the Why? Forest, which came out at the start of this year. Um, Why is it so slow? This is my first time ever playing Valheim, and uh, I played it as a big group of friends. There was about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, of, six of, maybe seven of us like I we actually count, i can count six of my head from what i remember but yeah it might have been the seventh but yeah this is valheim um it got very popular last year or the year before when it came out 2021 yeah. um as a like psx style survival game i would say it sort of has that sort of yeah look to it um yeah. it's but... interesting I think Valheim's a really good-looking game, and like how it look, like the lighting and stuff yeah, in yeah. this game when you turn it up is so good-looking. I and think the style is is quite strong. Yeah, I even played this on my Steam Deck. So I was like, I started playing Valheim around the time I got my uh, Steam Deck, and um, I loaded it up on my Steam Deck, and I in bed, and I was like, you know what, I'll play it for like a little bit, just test it out, and I ended up playing it for like two hours, like. Valheim on the Steam Deck is really well made. Like they actually put a lot of thought into like controller UI and, and management and stuff. Um, Do you think they own the Steam Deck? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, the Valheim like Steam Deck experience is really good. That's one thing to point out immediately. Um, if you're interested in picking up this game, get it on your dick. Uh, but on Valheim on deck. Um, so we played um, on a multiplayer server. Um, I think we got, I, I should just, like, I think we got to about progressing into the swamp, and that's sort of, like, where we petered off. Um, we started to get stuff from the swamp, like iron and stuff, but I should probably explain, like, progression in Valheim is very combat-based. Um, yeah, I, there's bosses and stuff, right, where they unlock them, or gives you stuff to be able to venture into other biomes and things, right? Yeah, there's bosses that give you buffs at the altar, which is yeah. um, useful for like running around fast or stuff like that. Um, Not a permanent buffs so after you've. Well, you've like here, them. here I have Ekthir buff, which basically lets me run faster and everyone around me run faster. So you you would use the Ekthir you... buff to, um, what are you, stuck you know, on? move around. We're stuck on like the land, I think, with too close okay. to the shore. So we're stuck on the... Uh... <laughs> but it's around! Okay, what a... uh... We're getting beached, we're getting beached. I'm like, I'm going to dig us out, I'm going to dig us out. Can you use... You're wearing heavy armor, right? Uh, so I was bronze man, like I think... Bronze man! <laughs> bronze armor's kind of a meme because as soon as you get iron, it's like only slightly better than troll, but way heavier. Right. But it's okay. what you had. Yeah, because we had all this bronze, and I was like, does anyone... Because everyone wore the bronze on, and they were like, oh, this this fucks up your like uh, weight like massively. Um, I don't want to wear this. And I was like, well, I'll be the tank. I will wear all the bronze armor. <laughs> you be the mascot. Like, um, Valheim's progression is not like, like a li linear thing, I'd say. It's sort of like you need to... <laughs> Choose your own path. Uh, I would say, you, like... Nothing gates you from other bosses, right? It's not like a linear... You need to kill one boss before you get to the next boss, or one area to the other area. It, it's, it, it's like... um, It's done through exploration, but none of it's really super explained to you how you do any of this stuff. Right. Um, which makes it, like, very confusing for new players, I would say. You Maybe it's a sense of exploration, I suppose, like challenge and exploration. Um, yeah. But um, 
you essentially have to go into different biomes which give you different items so for example you you start off in like the plains biomes and in the plains biomes you get like wolves and deer and you can hunt them for meat and usually you'll build a house in the plains biomes then you right. sort of progress and you'll find the black forest and the thing about the black forest is it's full of goblins and it has trolls and that lets you craft troll armor then once you get okay. troll armor i think you can find bronze in the uh inside the black forest biome that's when you move over to the uh, swamp biome which gives you iron there's also the mountain biome which has wolves on it which are like one shot you basically uh, early game but you need to go to the mountain biome to get silver ore and the wolf armor uh, because the pro you can't go straight to the wolf biome because it has um cold mechanics right so if you go oh, into so you, yeah there's like yeah there's mechanics you need to overcome yeah, so if you go straight to the uh, wolf biome, you'll basically freeze to death very quickly. Yeah. Um, like how this is actually just like five minutes of me and Michael slowly <laughs> sailing. It's because we're, against, so we're against because we're, we're against the wind. Oh. Uh, back, so we're trying to have to like catch sure. a little bit and then turn. I did. I I always say like I've um. I see. I keep seeing like this. Like I because as you might imagine, I got recommended this a lot. Back when it was like being big, and it's like I just watch it and go, I don't. Some of this stuff like has cool ideas, but just seems to be way too punishing or way too tedious to be interesting to me. But I like the premise. Like I love the idea of like, oh, here's this bone, but like it has like these obstacles, and that you can then you then have multiple ways to deal with it, or like you have to do another go to a different other biome and, and do it's something else to, to deal with it. The way it. the weight system works is you have like a certain amount of stuff you can carry. Which has weight, but then you have oh, armor. So it's, not, it's not just item based. No, there's armor that has weight on it, and then the armor right. also has like a stacking movement speed penalty if you're wearing like too much. Right. Uh, which is why I'm saying like bronze armor is kind of a meme where okay. um, the troll armor has about this. It has like slightly less than bronze, but you don't get. Um, the I movement speed penalty you, you don't get this movement speed penalty but you also get a sneak bonus for wearing a full set of it um, right so it's actually like yeah but basically the progression is you go into the black forest you have to get enough armor and resources to kill the trolls you get the troll armor you then get enough resources to go and you know kill ekthir the giant stag or whatever you go and you kill the elder you then um go into the uh, swamp biome and that's when i think things started to really fall apart for our small casual group because the way um valheim death works is every time um you die in this game you drop all of your stuff where you last died um so you like, basically like have to there's a lot of corpse running where you have to just yeah try and run and grab your stuff right but yep. also Valheim has skills and it's very useful to train these skills. The number one easiest way to die in Valheim is drowning. Um, because <laughs> if you run out of um, stamina in water, you will start drowning like immediately. So very much yeah. so um, you can't regain stamina in water. You can only regain stamina on the ground. And I just... Oh, it just seems so if you're fighting an enemy with your stamina... And then suddenly you fall off of a hill into some water and you've got no stamina, you'll die very quickly. Yeah. It just feels like so unrealistic. It's like okay, in my head, what should happen is fine, like stamina makes you swim at a normal rate. If you run out of stamina, you like you have to like bob up and down on the surface to regain it. Unless you're wearing like heavy armor where it's like you need to have it to be able to float or something. Is that like, how I would have done it? Mm. But then, but then I would have also made heavy armor, not just a meme. It just seems weird to me because, like, I feel like I could swim better than these guys. Well, specifically, bronze armor is a meme. I mean, compared to the troll armor, I would say. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. iron's a lot better. But um, yeah, everything costs stamina, but you're very much incentivized to use your stamina because if you attack, you can't sprint. If you sprint, you can't attack. So training up your running, training, you know, get. And the way you get stamina is by 
um, eating food. So f- you can eat three pieces of food, and you want to vary what you eat because food you get bonuses. Y- you get stamina and health bonuses based on what you eat. Yeah, which I think um, is a really cool idea. Yeah, I think the food system is really well thought out. Where you can't yeah. just eat berries I, fifty times like in Minecraft. Yeah, it, it's like it's not just refilling a bar to keep you alive. It's actually like providing something else, and you then have a choice. Of what yeah. it gives you, I suppose. I, yeah, I like that a lot. But I was talking about this briefly, like, because I, I spoke about it in the past with, like, Diablo 4. I was saying, like, there is no reason not to die in Diablo 4. Yeah. And I was saying, like, I feel like Valheim might be too much in the other direction where yeah. um, it's massively de-incentivizing, di- dying to a point where I would... When you die, you drop all your stuff and you lose all your skills... But then this ends up, you get to a point where you need to, like, corpse run back to your stuff to try and get it, and then you end up dying again, um, and then you lose more skills. So it's like, sometimes you can get caught in this cycle where it's super anti-newer players or casual player friendly, where um, it's like, it's like, well, I've died, but then I need to spend, you know, another, you know, hour grinding gear or skills to, in order to be able to get up to the level I need to be able to survive the area I died in. Yeah. Because once you get to like yeah. those swamp areas, you're like, um, you need poison resistance pots. You need like um, a certain level of armor, or you're just going to get one shot by mobs and stuff like that. And like dying in this game is very punishing. And I think that's genuinely a good thing for, um, in terms of not. L- you know, yeah, the, giving a reason. The idea of having a pun- yeah, having a, a re- yeah, the premise of having a hard death or a death that's like you don't want it. Like the disintegrating death is like a very good thing to have, but yeah, I just feel like it, it's a balancing act between difficulty and annoyance or tedium. Yeah, but and like, just, um, you just have to ask yourself like, is this an interesting way? Like, when you die, is it interesting? Is my is my biggest question. But yeah, I found like a lot of the stuff. Because a lot of the progression comes from these bosses going to these swamps and stuff like that. But a lot of the stuff I enjoyed was just building stuff or cutting down trees or doing yeah. the simple stuff. Yeah. Because that's the stuff that was felt rewarding because it didn't feel like at any time I would just immediately lose all that progress. Like, yeah. I never wanted to train skills because I knew that if I died, I would lose those skills. Like imagine if, in, if, imagine if you were playing like, RuneScape, right? Yeah. And you died yeah. and you lost all that skill. That would feel like awful. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was like a very would, much I... a design of like old school MMOs, like EverQuest and stuff. It was like you die, you lose skill, and yeah. that sort of stuff felt very, um, you know, bad. And there's a reason that they, you know, eventually <laughs> <and then it's, laughs> Don't do it. some people like that yeah. sort of stuff. And I, you know, as, as someone currently playing through Sekiro, like. Uh, so- from software games, I can see a an actual like of that. you know like r- making death undesirable is an important thing and can feel rewarding yeah. when you finally overcome that. I understand that. But in the in this game though, surely it'd be punishing enough, considering the way you because this is already like a punishing world, right? Surely, if, as you point out, that you would die, then you'd then die again to pick up your stuff. Yeah. Probably it's punishing enough the fact that you have to then corpse run in this very difficult place where you died. Like, yeah. I, to me, that's punishing enough. You don't need the skill thing on top of that. That's just added annoyance. Let's get into the, the building stuff because it's all very much like um, structure Physics support build. building. Yeah. 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 So you need to like physically be able to support something or it will fall down, uh, which is interesting in itself. Uh, but Or you need to... So, um, like. There's a, thing called cozy, as well, right? there's a thing called cozy buff, where if you have enough yeah. like nice amenities like fires and stuff like that, you will uh, regen faster it, and stuff like that. It makes building like not just like aesthetic; it actually has like a, a mechanical presence in the game. Which I do also, you really never want to be in water, even though this is not explained to you. Um, uh, do you get wet? Yeah, there's a wet debuff, and you go, well, I don't yeah. want to be wet, but it's like, oh, whatever, I'm wet. And it's not explained to you that being wet in Valheim is a massive debuff, and it's never really what? explicitly explained to you. Yeah. What does it actually do, though? I don't know. It really just weighs you down. Um, it cools you off? 
So when you are wet in Valheim, you have minus 25% health regen. You have minus 15% stamina regen. What? And um, you are weak against frost and lightning. Those make sense. Your first two make no sense. Again, I feel like I, I could do better than that in real life, and I'm not fit at all. Yeah, it's like... Oh, fuck, I accidentally fell in the water. I have no stamina, yeah. and now I'm, I've got wet debuff until I go and build a fire. It's just like, oh, oh okay. Like, there's a lot of stuff in Valheim I really like. Like, I think the game looks amazing. I love the, the, the yeah, aesthetic. Cool I love aesthetic. just the general, you know, going around building stuff. Um, but I think ultimately why I didn't get to the end of Valheim or any of the DLC is ultimately people just petered off of the very hard um, progression system. It was very much, it was very un unrewarding in the end because yeah. it felt like you were never making progress. Uh, it felt like one set point. forward, two set back, and then just then repeat, and then, and then you had to repeat this. This is what I heard for like over Discord is that like, a lot of like, oh, I have to go and do this again. And then we like, you you would then attempt to get yourself back. It's like back, you want to come on to the game for like fail. a couple of hours, and it's like, well, you know, well, if I die, I've got to spend the next four hours getting all my stuff back. And there was yeah. a lot of like oceans, like Mission Impossible missions, like just sailing yeah. boats across to try and set, rescue people's stuff or just going into the swamp and just naked and just trying to get we built like giant bridges um didn't across the swamp which bridges are really not supposed to be supported in valheim from what i could tell but we were just i spent most of my time building like jank bridges in order to Thank basically yeah. allow us a way to cross into the swamp without having to like um get it destroyed so if the, the, the way yeah. So the, the the way there's a system in this game that lets you build portals, um, but mobs can attack your bases, and if you build a portal in the swamp, it's going to constantly be attacked by these very strong swamp creatures who are going to very quickly destroy your portal. So one thing you can do is you can build like a portal near the swamp in the plains, and then you can try. But then usually there's a huge body of water across it. So what we ended up doing was. I was building up this giant jank bridge across from the plains to the swamp. Right. So we, <laughs> from so we the could, portal. So we could try and use that to corpse run to the people dying in the swamp. But Wasn't yeah. there like a big thing where um, Gunnar um, that we saw earlier was like nakedly corpse running like to get people's stuff or, and, and, and his own stuff at one point and just like endless naked mm. corpse running. Yeah. And, did, and he ended up didn't care about losing all of his skills. Well, you get to a point where you have nothing. So yeah, you must really. Well just that have I think sometimes you know dying is you really don't want to die is important and stuff, right? Um, yeah. But there comes a point where it's like, well, I've died so much that dying isn't impactful anymore because I have nothing left to lose. Yeah. So where it actually is not, goes is the again, other end. Not important. Yeah. So it is really is a balancing act. It's it's difficult, and I, from what I heard, you know, what like discussions I've had is like yeah, it does to me for me anyway. It's like I think there's cool ideas in this game, but like I feel like it's too punishing and too tedious. Some of it for me right, to actually I'm, want to play, it, but I'm glad it exists. I I I I spent a lot of time on the game. I spent like thirty hours on the game, and I I had a lot of fun playing the right. game, but. It's not a game I look at and go, I want to immediately jump into this again. Right. So because you, you it feels like... Time in, you don't want to go back and play it anytime well, soon. Well, I, I feel like if I'm going to um, commit... Um, it feels like a big commitment to go and say, okay, let's play Valheim again. Because I understand I... as soon as I get into the game, I'm going to have to grind a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I um... guess my question is, so you put 30 hours investment into, I assume it into this one multiplayer game? Yeah, I haven't played single player. So yeah, how much, how much did you manage to achieve it? You got, you got to the swamp and... Yeah, we got iron you, stuff. In We're iron, in the swamp. Okay. Um, but again, it's like, there's not like a, a linear progression. It's like hard to tell no. what you need to do in order to get to the next stage. I know there's like more, but the, I know that we need to get to the mountains somehow and get like weather resistance. But um, 
Yeah, I know there's a lot of like quality of life mods that people use for this game as well. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, which I think maybe would help the experience or like a more softcore mode. I don't know. Yeah. Just get rid of some, like, get rid of some of the tedium without, like, the challenge being removed, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah, I... I really like Valheim, I just... Yeah, I don't know how to describe it. I think it is very much a... tough survival. Oh, Michael work, you love to Michael see Michael work! <laughs> And then, and then you, you just dump shit into the chest. That's one of my favorite things to do in survival games. You create a chest called Michael Work, and then you just dump everything you can't be able to sort into it. I okay, I hate sorting stuff in survival games. It's one of my biggest yeah. pet peeves. I just keep things sorted to begin with, but I, I like survival games where they give me the um the tools to make an automatic or I mean automatic, but like a self sorting system. Let's say automatic is like. But there's like, like know, th there's lots of, of um, ah, oh, the rock chest. Um, that there, there's lots of um, I was gonna say there's lots of like cool like other content and there's like a whole expansion sort of thing for Valheim that I haven't experienced at all. Maybe I would go back to Valheim if I could play with somebody who was more experienced in the game and can kind of show me the ropes. I think. Yeah. Because I think just from my experience of playing it with a bunch of new players, it's ultimately I think we kind of gave up and we're like, you know what, we'll just, you know, either come back to this at some point or we won't. And we haven't come back to it yet, so. Yeah, yeah. it was a while ago since you last played it, right? Start of this year we played it. I played it yeah. last on the 12th of February. Um, right. Not to say Probably Valheim yeah. is not, like, there is a, I, there's a lot of, like, fond memories I've had of Valheim where I'm like, yeah. this shit is really fun. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. Ultimately, my feeling about multiplayer survival games is sometimes it always seems to peter off and you never really get to the end. Like, it oh, wasn't yeah. until, yeah, like, yeah. a couple of years ago I actually completed Minecraft because we would always quit oh, before yeah. that point. Yeah. Yeah, wait, you can complete Minecraft. You're killing the Ender Dragon. No, nah, there's more game after it. What? Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next survival game I played this year. Uh, Sons of the Forest, a game that came out this year, 2023. Um, so I'm a big fan of The Forest. I think it is one of the best survival games out there. Um, it was a game that Sh was in strong early, story, right? early access. Yes, very strong survival horror sort of story to it. It is very tense where the main gameplay revolves around. So you basically go on a plane with your son. Timmy, it crashes over this island and you're trying to find your son. Um, and the main gameplay of this game is uh, exploring caves to get upgrades. And these caves are like these giant mazes full of mutants. Um, and I really loved the first game. I have about 70 hours in the first game and, uh, even played it in VR as well. Um, really, really fun. And I heard Sons of the Forest was going to come out in like a, I, th I think it's out of early access, but they were, or is it still in early access? Yeah. It was coming out in an early access state. So they're basically like the game has an ending, but we still have more to do with the game. And I was gonna I was basically gonna wait until the game, you know, came out of early access and fully released. But my friend uh Dave, who I played the um Vietnam wave, uh, who I played the forest before, was really hyped and it was like, Oh, I'll get you a copy um for your birthday and we'll play it together, right? So I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. And yeah, I think it is pretty fun. Um one of the biggest good things I can say about it is there's a lot of great returning stuff from the first game and it very much keeps that tense atmosphere of exploring cave systems. You are, you know, dropped into a... I think it's like a helicopter crash in this one. So it's okay. slightly different and... A different crash. Well, instead of being a survival expert who loses his son, you are a, uh, a military team. Um, okay that gets um, drop-landed into this uh, 
this island full of these weird cannibal creatures um very much like the first game but i think it's a slightly different island i believe i don't know like 100 percent of the deep lore but um yeah i think it's 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 slightly different from the first game um Nighttime is always terrifying in this game. Um, I like the inclusion in this game of adding uh, Kevin, the uh, basically the your co-op partner that's AI. I don't know if you've seen this at all. Um, no. But basically, one of the people on the um, helicopter crash gets like brain damaged, and um, he's one of your so he can't talk, or um, but he can less so you can write things down you want him to do from like a list you can say kevin go chop wood and he'll basically run around doing tasks for you so it's sort of like it's sort of like having a a partner in single player yeah it's like kevin i I need fish go get fish and he'll run around and he'll go and get it sounds like you've got an ai michael work uh, oh yeah that's the best yeah michael work there it is um we're just having a sleep to get to daytime so does um, sleeping cost resources? Like how does the sleeping stuff? Uh, so sleeping is on like a set thing. So when you go to sleep, you'll wake up um, the set amount of time for when you... So you can go to sleep too early and you'll still be in nighttime or you can sleep right. too late and you'll miss most of the day. So you have to be careful when you sleep. Um, there's like a calories thing. So how much protein you eat, how much energy you use. Like there's a whole stat sheet you can min max in this game and get making sure you cut down enough trees and eat enough food to gain your muscles up is like an important thing to do before you sleep. Um, right. But sleeping is very important for like energy and stuff like that. Um, obviously I'm not, I, I'm worried about, you know, eating people. I'm a secret cannibal. Um, oh, I forgot th- yeah, your your secret backstory. Yeah, yeah. So basically, oh, so I will say, running the game on my system, it ran very poorly in early access. Like the game clearly wasn't optimized as well as it could be. Um, like it, it, it was definitely bound. Um, like I have a four Z eighty and a seven thousand seven hundred X um, processor, and but yeah. they're still developing mechanics in the world. I can't. Uh... Yeah, like the the first game wasn't terribly optimized either, but it, it definitely got better over time. Um right. but yeah, I so would say like that would get better. My my first experience was that it definitely needed a bit more fine tuning on the on the optimization. Um The one thing that I felt let down about by the Sons of the like I feel like Playing it in early access compared to playing the forest after it released, it feels like a step back in a lot of respects compared to the first game. Where the first game, you know, it did things, it does some things differently, but the amount of content you have with the first game compared to the early access launch of Sons of the Forest, it feels like there's still a lot of time and and development they need to put into making um, Sons of the Forest a great game like the forest is. Um, but they're right. not there yet. Like the building was definitely a big step back from the first game. Like there wasn't many options and it was definitely a very different building style to the first game. Where you had to like lay out the wooden planks and then like upgrade them sort of thing. It was like... Yeah, I, I thought the, old, the, yeah, the first game had like a really cool mechanic for that. I like, thought that made a lot, of, a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, like it, it took some getting used to like the the moving over to the new building mechanics and i think i did start to get it a bit more but um yeah it definitely didn't feel as like to build like a spiked wall you would have to put the log down and then you would have to get the axe out and then then cut the spike into or cut things into certain shapes first and then put them together it was like a more complicated system than the first game but I guess this was done to try and make it more realistic, but it ended up making it feel a bit more clunky. In that respect, yeah, it's still I would a say. game. I think it. I think it needs to be smooth. I think it needs. There to was smooth. something that I said about like, um, you know, the the forest one compared to Green Hell was just like, it it was a re- there was a lot of realistic stuff in it, but it never put realism before fun, and I yeah. think that the forest still does that. The Sons of the Forest still does that, but there's certainly some stuff where, like, oh, we could be a bit more realistic, right? 
Um, yeah, you know, I've seen the Deathly Wings. And, and the first, it's like, the, hey, you you can you need to make sure you know you can min max your stats. It's not something you need to do, but also if you want to get a turtle shell, you can go like slide down it like a skate like a skateboard down this hill and stuff like dumb shit like that, which I always loved about the game. Yeah, uh, which I thought was really cool. Um, but to put this in perspective. Um, I got to the uh, ending of Sons of the Forest and I have 10 hours in the game. Um, so that's to like show you how much sort of content was in the early access launch. I don't like I haven't been like massively keeping up with the the patch updates that they've been doing. But um, from the early access launch, it feels very much like, um, you know, there's still a long way to go. Um I like the the new 3D printer they put into this. There's a so you find these like underground um, like research f- uh, bases, and basically you need to find like plastic ink for them, and then you can 3D print stuff. So you can print uh, plastic cool. armor, or you can print like a red mask and wear it to trick the cannibals. Or um... oh, also diegetic menus. I think this really tripped me up at first, but then once I got the hang of it, like having a UI that could exist in the real world where you just lay out all of your stuff and you look at it to use it, I think is a really cool system and that returning from the um, the original uh, forest is really yeah. cool. Like sometimes it works, sometimes it I, doesn't. Always, right. Because I was looking at going, being confused at what did what. Well, like I, I think like you, used to it. you get, yeah, like um, another example was like Metro Exodus has like a physical map you hold up and then you have like a compass yeah. that uh, shows you where to like it's cool like i think generally i personally prefer gameplay first and i'm sort of more yeah about the more usable menus and maps yeah, and stuff like yeah, that but for sure. i think if you're going for menus. a more immersive thing and you get used to it it can be a really cool thing um but yeah sons of the forest i think i think sons of the forest is a game i kind of wish i waited for or um, it to be out of early access and then played it because I feel like I finished the game now and until the launch of early outside of early access I don't really have any reason to go back um, because I've finished the story I've kind of experienced the new world so and these are small incremental not, upgrades they're going to be doing until the launch right yeah so they're not they're not adding more to the story before it launches it's going to be well I the think they are adding between... more story but it's like Am I really going to replay through the entire game just to see a little bit more story? Yeah. Yeah, You know? Like, I think there's there's multiple endings in terms of what you can choose to do at the end, but it's like, I'm not going to play through the entire game again just to see this slightly different ending. And, you know, some people will. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. No, I I appreciate that. So my friend... um, Ethan, who also played this, who's a big fan of the original Forest, he messaged me about the ending. He was like, oh, what the fuck? Like, I won't spoil it because it, it came out this year, but the ending to the story of this game is like, what the fuck? That just came out of nowhere. Like, but j- just to tell you about the story, like, you can tell it's it's a bit rushed because it sort of goes from, oh, who the hell is this? Who the hell is this? Like, there's cutscenes in the game, right? Where you get knocked on the floor. It's like, haha, I am this guy. And then you get to the end of the game. And you're like, who are all these guys? Like, you're watching the end cutscene, right? And you're like, yeah. what is going on? I don't understand why I'm here. I don't know who that is. I don't know what's. And then the game ends, and it's like, oh, okay. This feels like it's not finished. And that was my experience right. in the early access of Sons of the Forest. It's like, it was pretty fun for the short amount of time you play it, but it feels like ultimately the early access launch was rushed. And I personally wanted to, and was going to wait for the full release, but because my friend purchased the game for himself and me and really wanted to play it, I was like, you know what? I'll give it a go. And I think the game is good, but I would say if you're looking, if if you're like me, I would say probably just wait for the full release. Yeah. This is the quandary I kind of had with the Baldur's Gate 3. Is that obviously you could have mm. bought it in a early access for like a couple of years now. And I'm like, but I was yeah. always like, I don't want to experience like a story that's going to be changed or like it kind of spoils it like for like a more polished version. And it turns out I was correct. They did change the start. 
and it's yeah. like I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't like have it ruined and like and I waited so yeah. like yeah I just feel like if the, I, I, um, what I'm saying is like for early access content with a story I think it's it doesn't really make any sense to me unless you don't like, unless you like release it in segments where you don't touch the the story you put out and you just then add in the next chapter to the next chapter that makes sense but then you can go back and change stuff you've put out there already if it's very heavily story based and that's just yeah i think personally for me like what i would love to see is they need to expand the story and yeah. add more because honestly i i was super everyone i've talked to about this is like Oh yeah, this the game just ends and I had no idea who these people were. It was just like it just like ends. I just like what the hell is going on? There's like a bunch of caves in this game that are just completely empty and they feel like there's no reason to go into them. They just feel like filler and it's just like yeah. I feel like that's a perfect opportunity to be like, "All right, let's put this key item into this cave and have you get to the end of this and, you know." So, but I'm looking for I assume you know, that empty caves are there for that in the future maybe or is but, it just like But from where I played it in the early access, they're just kind of pointless, you know. Which is yeah. the point of it. So, I I want to see more story stuff. I want to see um the building expanded and I want to see like the world filled out with more stuff to do. And I think if they can do, you know, updates like that and then put it together for a launch, then I'll definitely be rechecking out Sons of the Forest because the base they've got here is really fun and interesting. I think it is yeah. genuinely a big improvement over the original game in a lot of senses. The like the look of the island, uh, you know, the the graphics, the general gameplay, good, the yeah. new features they've added are really good. Like the story is interesting, but it's just like I felt like, you know, it it as I thought it was starting, it was ending. Um, so yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Oh, there's more guns in this game as well. Whereas in the first game, it was very much like you could get a flintlock pistol if you slowly over time, you know, um, found these parts under trees. This game's like, you're military guys. You can have a Glock, you can have a shotgun. And it's much that like oh, okay. the combat's a lot more interesting, I would say. Have you got um, um, a, a, a Jesus Christ cross there? What's going on? Yeah, just to scare out those bloody vampires. Okay. The, just first, the first forest game ends with like a full blown out boss battle. Um, okay. But nothing like that in this game. But hopefully in the future. I, I'm like, with, with Sons of the Forest, it gives me a lot of hope um, for the future because I personally know like how long it took for the first game to get to the point where it was like an amazing game so i know yeah. that with enough time that sons of the forest will get there and hopefully you know um by that point i can play this game. probably with a bunch of other friends who've never played it and then we can re-experience it again through them as well but yeah those are the some of the survival games i've been playing this year and i would probably recommend both of them but yeah. I would recommend with some with of the first waiting for the full release and then for yeah. Valheim um, it is sort of more of a hardcore game than the average survival is, game I would say. Is Valheim released now? Or is it still in, Valheim's in released. Valheim's it's released. released now, okay. Yeah. And there's even expansions for Valheim, like in terms of updates right. expansions. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's our tangerine on survival games and uh, we will see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.